Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Vogue Show. Back in the studio today. It's lovely to be here. Hope you're all well wherever you happen to be. Tuning in from all different places from the globe. Across the world you can watch the Vogue Show, which is a great place to do it from, to be honest with you, because if you happen to be on a different planet, you may not actually manage to get the show. But we are live, ladies and gentlemen. We are live on Facebook. Yes, Facebook is where we happen to be doing the show. Now, if you're watching a rerun on YouTube, then uh, that's great. Lovely to see you. Might be watching the replay on Facebook, of course, which is just as good. But if you want to catch the show as we do it, and if you want to contribute to the show, then Facebook is the place. It's the Vobe Show page. Go and check that out. The Vobe Show. V-O-B-E-S. Vobe. <coughs> that uh, stands for... Very odd broadcasting entertainment service. Vobes. Very odd broadcasting entertainment service. I don't know why it says that, but that's what it is. Anyway, so uh, welcome along. Lovely to see you. It's the 3rd of August, 2018. I don't know if you're a bit like me and think, hang on, this year seems to be passing incredibly fast. We're now into the second... Are we? No, we're into the second month of the second half of the year. Goodness gracious, it'll soon be Christmas. We don't want that. Not too soon yet, ladies and gentlemen, that would be too soon. But, but, aren't we having a cracking summer? We are here in the UK, I don't know where you happen to be, but in the UK we're having an absolute cracking summer and it's superb. And I love it, I love it, I love the sunshine, I love the heat. I love getting up in the morning at five o'clock and looking out of my window and seeing Morrison's, the great big supermarket there in front, blocking the light coming into my bedroom. But other than that, other than that, I enjoy the fact that the sun is shining and it's beautiful and you can step outside and in the morning, in the morning air, you can have yourself a nice cup of coffee or whatever it is, whatever tipple you like first thing in the morning. It might be gin and tonic for all I know. Perhaps you've been working incredibly late and you need to freshen up with something as you roll in at breakfast. Who knows? Well, whatever it is, at that sort of time in the morning, it is a perfect time to go and have a nice little breakfast and take things easy. Anyway, welcome along. Let's see who is live with us as we broadcast on Facebook. If you're watching on any other format, then I apologise. I can't actually mention your name because it doesn't come up. But Simon Brown, Paul Hine, uh, Ian Beddow, Steve Blakey, Cushdie Phil, uh, Anne Evans, Matthew Holdsworth, Richard Suggett, Mackintosh Pam, uh, Stuart Douch, uh, and uh, Ian Beddow, Steve Pilfold, they're all there. Uh, people are clapping. Linda Kane, which is lovely to see you. Chris E. Nash, uh, Kevin Hall, uh, Nigel Cooper, Glenn Johnson, Cynthia Julian, Mark English, uh, Emily Champion, and many more, many more. Terence Dackham, uh, Maya Ullman Harwood, and uh, Gary Richardson, and so on and so on. The lovely Julia, unfortunately, isn't there out there today because she and her husband are making their way up to Birmingham any moment. Um, she's, uh, she left her phone here this afternoon. It was a bit of a disappointment because uh, poor old Julia, without her phone, it's, it's like, well, she's addicted to it. Let's be honest, she's addicted to it. We all are a bit addicted to our phone. What would you do if you lost your smartphone, you lost access to the world? What would you do? Could you cope? Would you be stressed? Anyway, she just popped in before we did the show and she said, I must, please, I must have my phone. I gave her a phone. She was a very happy young lady. She gave me a hug. Oh, thank you, she said. And she's whizzed off now back home, collect her husband, scooped up to go and pick up her son who are uh, in uh, Portsmouth area, uh, Fairham Way. And then <clears throat> they're going off for a family weekend in Birmingham, which sounds very nice. So that's all very good. So... I'm uh, I'm on my Todson this weekend, but don't let that worry you because I'm going to uh, the field on the Weald. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, an amazing event near Uckfield, and I should be going there tomorrow. The field on the Weald, or the Weald in the field, or whatever it is, I can't remember now. But anyway, Uck Uck Uckfield are uh, putting on an event, 
and it's just off the town centre. It's going to be exciting. I should be doing a report from there, but not a live report, not a live report, because uh, Bessie, my lovely little uh, live box, is not quite ready, but very close. We're going to talk about that in a moment, which will be grand. Let's uh, see if who is out there. Mark Selwood saying, loving the shirt. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sporting the Bald Explorer T-shirt. Thank you to the lovely people who have ordered a Bald Explorer T-shirt. It's very kind of you. Thank you so much. Um, all of those who've ordered, they're all being processed. I've had an email to say that Matthew Holdsworth, yes, you, sir are having yours. It's in the post. So hopefully yours should arrive tomorrow uh, and or Monday. So um, now I'm just a bit concerned about the sizes. So do check when you order your T-shirts, if you are ordering a T-shirt, I should say, of course, which would be lovely. Uh, if you do, make sure you check the sizes, because the thing is, while I will accept returns, I really would prefer that you sorted out the sizes because I can't sell, I can't hand them back to the company once they've been printed. All I can do is hope to sell them again, uh, refund and then sell them on. But um, so if, if, if you're a bit wary, just do double, double check. This is a medium and I'm five foot ten. I'm of medium. I've lost a bit of weight, actually. So um, this is a little bit big for me. So, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a bit worried that Matthew's gone for a large and he's a very slim chap and tall. I don't want it to sort of hang off you like a bean pole, um, like, you know, like a flag draped around you. So I'm a bit concerned about that, but because uh, I want everybody to be happy. Emily Champion says, uh, I can't wait for my T-shirt to come. Yes, it's been ordered today. I think you said extra small. Uh, Mayor uh, Ullman Harwood says, do they do you do them in pink? We may do them in pink in the future. At the moment, there are just the two colours, I'm afraid. Uh, when I say the two colours, there's black with a white lettering on. That's all that's available at the moment. Other colours will come on stream. I just haven't been able to process them. But um, after Tractorfest, after the, 18th and the 17th and 18th and 19th, after that event, things will slow down. I'm a bit... Uh, running around at the moment trying to get Tractorfest organised from our point of view because the Bald Explorer will be live from Tractorfest and so then I've got a lot more admin to do. But at the moment, uh, we, uh, they're not uh, there. Paul Couchman has joined us. Hello, Paul, from the Regency Townhouse, historic food creator, lovely bloke, lovely to see you. Um, Mark Selwood says, I've ordered nice and small to show off my manly muscles. I want the Bald Explorer showing off my six pack. Yes, that's right, Mark. We've made sure that yours came up to about here, actually, just under the logo. And so that your midriff is on display and your impeccable six pack is there. So that would be good. Um, hello, uh, <coughs> Paul. Andy DeGlace says, nice T-shirt, Richard. Do you do extra large? We do. Check the sizes on the website, on the baldexplorer.com website. Uh, that'd be the place to check it out. Uh, hang on a minute. I'll see if I can um, find the... Oh, it's very strange. It seems to have gone. Uh... Hmm. Title. Is that not it? Where is it? No. That's not it. Hang on, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just trying to find... Here we go, here we go. There's the... Uh, that's the title, the website <laughs> address, rather. Um, if you go to baldexplorer.com, you will see that there's men's and ladies' T-shirts, but they're all black and white at the moment, so apologies for that. But that is what is available. You can order them now. 12 quid, which Mr Suggett tells me is a reasonable price. He thinks the quality is good. It's 100% cotton. Um, and in this weather, it is very nice. Uh, of course, in this weather, the black will attract the heat. Of course, that's a uh, thing. Linda Kane says, going to wait for a colour other than black, if that's OK. Well, of course, that's OK. You'll just have to wait because it's lazy bones here. I haven't got round to sorting them out. John Berger has arrived. Hello, John Berger. Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming along. Uh, Richard Suggett says, can you pop round and change the calendar? Uh, yes, um, actually, I can change the calendar. Mr. Suggett doesn't have to do that. Uh, I can do that by leaning back here. So, so far, we've got this lovely picture of me. And then we change it, and it is a picture of Martin Snow. 
and Mr. Vobes. Martin Snow. Whatever happened to Martin Snow? We don't see Martin Snow so much these days on the show. I keep asking him to do something, but um, he seems to have disappeared into uh, oblivion, I'm sorry to say. There we go. So that's August's picture, all done and dusted. Marvellous. Uh, John Berger says, yeah, but do you do American extra large? We tend to be on the bit of the heavier stock size, he says. Well, well, we do do extra, extra large. All I can reiterate is check the sizes on the website. You'll see that there is a size thing. Do check that out and that would be good. Nikki Jess has joined. Hello, Nikki. Nice to see you. Kevin Hall says, Richard, while you're there, can you change the calendar we gave him and so it can be seen? Um, the calendar that you gave me, yes. Well, actually, we haven't been putting up the actual... Oh, yes, it's a bit off camera. Hold on a second. I can't get it. I can't get it down, Kevin. It's been nailed in. Um, I'll have to sort that out another occasion. I do apologise. I don't get up because um, I'm not wearing very respectable trousers. Uh, I'm wearing my paint underneath this, ladies and gentlemen. Not underneath this, but down here. Just, you know, now that I've mentioned it, of course, uh, I'm actually wearing uh, my painting shorts. So they're not particularly fashionable, uh, and I would rather not reveal them. Uh, so there we go. Uh, Chris E. Nash says, I always order large. I'm tall and slim, but need the length. And I'm interested, if you ordered that, do they not flap about? You know, if you're thin um, and you order large, so you get a lot of material, doesn't it, like, hang on you like, um, like a tent? Like, you know, a, a, like a... An awning on a tent. That would be interesting. Uh, Cushy Phil says, hello, Nikki. Mark Selwood says, hello, Nikki, my darling. Oh, my darling. That's very nice. Uh, so there we go. Uh, anyway, so that's all going well. No, no, not again. He's in his jockeys. I'm not in my jockeys. Thank you, Kevin. Andy Joy. What a joy. Andy has arrived and it's lovely to see you. Evening all. Right. So now let's get on to some business. Um, first of all. We've had this very nice pod, uh, postcard. This lovely postcard has uh, arrived from Soren, or Soren. Hello, Soren. And this is, he says, Dear Richard, after seeing your video about Jill, the post mill, I send you this postcard showing the cow windmill in Veer in the Netherlands. He says, where my family and I are on vacation. Best wishes from Soren. So, Soren... Thank you so much. That's very nice. That will be pinned up there um, by tomorrow. I won't do it now because we're actually going to transpose all of those onto the new board that Nigel Sadler very kindly donated. We've got a nice big board, so we will be putting that on. But thank you so much. If anybody wants to send a postcard, if you're on holiday during the holiday, then it would be lovely. You can add your postcard to the board, which would be great. What you have to do is if you've got my address, then that's all you need to do, of course. If you haven't got my address, email me, richard at vobes.com. Couldn't be easier. Richard at vobes.com and say, I'd like to send you a postcard. Can I have your address? I'll send you the address and you can send me the postcard and we'll, we'll stick it on there, which is good. So thank you very much for that. Don't tell tall people. Don't tall people have super large legs and short bodies? Well, they have long legs, don't they? Says Mark Selwood. Some people like baggy, not as toned as you. Well, that's true. Well, it's fine if you're tall and you don't and you want baggy. That I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Um, I'm just saying that if you're tall and like a beam pole, won't it hang strangely? It's almost as if you want, you know, a t-shirt that is longer in length but not necessarily any wider i don't know how how you know how it works really anyway let's move on ladies and gentlemen it's friday evening and i thought it would be nice to have uh, a drink i don't drink very often but i fancy a drink it's very hot it is friday i've been working very hard this week so i am going to try this is something that um the lovely joe smith i have to say purchased for uh, julia and i she's got her own bottle at home uh, and this is the Biddingdon Cider. We went to Biddingdon's Vineyards, where they make some fantastic wines. Um, and we did an interview with them. 
And uh, Joe, who is part of the Tractor Fest organisation team that we're appearing at, very kindly bought for the lovely Julia and I some uh, different bottles of stuff to try. And so I'm going to try the Biddingdon Sparkling Kentish Cider on today's show. This is called Biddy's Five. Biddy's Five, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the reason it's called Biddy's Five, well, let me tell you. Um, I'll read a bit from their website so we know exactly what we're talking about. They say uh, here, this was last year, they said that they were excited to announce the launch of their first range of carbonated bottled ciders. They're 500 millilitres. Uh, and it'll be hitting the fridges and shelves across Kent, Sussex, the southeast of London, from April last year. Biddy's 5 and Biddy's 8 have been crafted following the traditional Barnes family recipe, which has been perfected at Biddenden for the last 45 years. The Biddenden range, keeping with all Biddenden ciders, are created from culinary and desert, or not desert, dessert, beg your pardon, dessert apples selected from Kent's, Kent, Kent's finest orchards, giving a refreshing and... Um, Apple experience, a sensational true cider. They say, they say, but the old Vobie one-eyed Kenobi will be the judge of that in actual fact. Now, Biddy's 8, that's not what this one is. This is Biddy's 5, but it, Biddy's 8 has an 8% medium dry cider with a gentle sparkle, whereas the Biddy's 5, which is what I'm going to try, here's a medium dry with a gentle sparkle leading to a juicy, crisp apple flavour and a beautiful long finish. So they claim. So let's... Open that up. We've opened that up and uh, we're going to pour some out. Now, I'm a bit old school on these things. I don't like them to be in the fridge because I think when you stick stuff in the fridge, what it does is hides any chemicals in these things, particularly with lager. I mean, I know a lot of people like their lager ice cold, but if you have it slightly warm, it tastes a bit weird. But beer, real ale should be warm. When I say warm, I'm not talking 20 degrees or anything. About 11 degrees centigrade is about right and above. So this is cool, but not uh, warm, but not uh, cold, if you see what I mean. So we've got a nice sparkly finish on this. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just going to hold that up over there. Careful not to drop it on the laptop, sparkling away, giving it a nose. Beautiful smell. I have to say it's lovely, lovely smell. Um, so this, these are, as I say, these are from Biddenden in Kent. And it's a, oh, it is nice. It is nice. I don't know how expensive it is because it was given to me, but it's delicious. Um, very nice apple flavour. A gentle spa, um, sparkle, not too fizzy, not enough to make your eyes water. That's what opal fruits used to do, but they don't do that now because they're not called opal fruits. And that's very nice. 5%. Um, by volume. So there we go. So that's going to be fueling the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've um, also, I have eaten before the show, you'll be pleased to know. So hopefully I don't keel over. Now, interestingly, I've had a korma curry. And I thought we'd talk about, as it's Friday, what is your favourite curry? What sort of curry do you like? The korma was brought over by the lovely Julia. Lovely Julia sometimes gets a bit worried about the old Vobie one-eyed Kenobi. I think she thinks that I don't eat. Um, and she's probably right, really. I used to eat loads. I used to eat big, hefty meals. I wasn't big or fat or anything. But I, I have lost a bit of weight. Everybody keeps telling me, oh, you've lost a bit of weight, Mr Vobes. And I think that's mainly because I've been running around rather a lot. And um, I've been panicking and stressing and getting things done and concentrating and working and getting up early and ending up going to bed late. And I know I'm burning. Mr. Suggett says you're burning the candle at both ends and it's not good for you. And I do know that. And I do want to get a, a more relaxing rests in and I want to get some sit downs and reads done. Some reading. I've got some fantastic books to read. But I haven't got the time. So I think I haven't had much time to prepare and eat food in the way that I ought to be doing. And so consequently, uh, I think the lovely Julia, who is uh, a little bit worried, she occasionally says, look, we've got a little bit of leftover food. Or she very kindly invites me over to have a meal with her hubby and her. 
which is very nice. And I have to say, I'm absolutely thrilled. By the way, if anyone fancies inviting the Vobes over for an evening meal, um, then you're very welcome. Uh, I, I, you're very welcome. To, I'm inviting myself, basically. Um, and we could do a little interview about something and play it in on the show. That would be the only, you know, the drawback is I'd need to get some content out of you. But it would be fast, fascinating to come over and meet you, have a lovely meal together, record something. Only has to be about five minutes and, and play it in on the show and it would be a terrific. Um, so there we are. There's a challenge for you. If you'd like to invite the Vobes over for a meal, let's do it. Let's do that thing, shall we? Let's see how it goes. Uh, let's have a look, see at the comments. Uh, Korma all the way, favourite uh, curry. What is your favourite curry? Korma all the way, says Maya. Uh, Glenn Johnson says all of them love a curry. Uh, some people like it really, really hot and spicy. Uh, and if so, what is the spice that you prefer? Cynthia Walder has joined. Hello, Cynthia. Uh, it's very nice to see you. Nikki Jess says, wow, Richard, don't you think little bit too much? I don't know what you mean. Uh, could you explain that in... Uh, more than one sentence, which would be great, uh, because sometimes I'm not quite sure what you mean. Emily Champion says something. It's just disappeared. Love chicken tikka, uh, and some others. I've just they've just vanished off my screen. I've eaten a something curry. Never again. That's gone off my screen. What is that? A fal fal curry. Favorite. This is Richard Suggett. His favorite is vindaloo. Vindaloo. Uh, Richard is o. Oh, is an over analyzer says mark selwood what are we what are we analyzing what sorry i must must admit nikki can you explain what you're talking about um i'm not quite sure what you're talking about uh, steve blakey says a chicken dan sack that's his okay i've never tried a chicken dan sack brendan potts has popped in hello brendan lovely to see you thank you for coming by this evening it's always good to see you uh let's have a look here what else have we got kushti phil says i like my curries hot yes here we go like my women yes same old same old uh lamb korma says kevin hall so a mild a mild one emily cham says you're welcome to come to mine richard maya can come too there we go that's a, that's a lovely uh pairing up for the evening emily we'll we'll do that we'll come for an evening have to be a non-show night so a tuesday or a thursday would be good just having a bit more of this delicious cider, I have to say. So let's organise that whenever you're free. And I'll whiz up to Colston one evening. And that would be grand. Um, it'd be good to do something different like that and then do a little video. We could video the meal, couldn't we? We could video us gobbling the meal, edit out the, the bad bits and then keep all the good bits. I don't know. It's just I throw these ideas out, ladies and gentlemen. I throw them out to see whether anybody rises to the bait. And if people do raise up to the bait, then we should do them. So, uh, Emily, send me an email. Send me an email if you're interested in uh, inviting the Vobes. Um, just so you know, I don't eat fish and I like my meat very well cooked. I don't like any red in beef, just so you know. But I don't mind vegetarian whatsoever. If you run a soup kitchen, says Steve Pilford. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go to get the Vobes up for there. Mark English is not keen on curry. Yuck, he says. What's wrong with curry, Mark English? Be interested to know that. Uh, medium is what Kevin Hall likes. He likes a good medium so he knows where it's come from and if the uh, beef or whatever the curry is can contact him through a medium, then that's extra good. Anne Osborne doesn't like curries at all. Uh, Cynthia Walder says good evening. She's sorry she's late. And Andy Dangley says fish curry is superb, otherwise a chicken gel frazy. Well, I've never had fish curry. I don't like fish. I cannot stand fish. The only fish I will allow to pass my lips is tinned tuna. And it has to be in sunflower oil. I like to get rid of the sunflower oil, but I don't like that sort of salty, fishy taste. Um, so there we are. Stuart Douch likes a chicken madras. Mark Selwood loves a gel frazy. I like a gel frazy, actually. Brendan Potts says Chinese and tomato pizza. Brendan Potts, we're talking about curry, not pizzas or favourite foods. Just so you know. Uh, Glenn Johnson says his taxi is on the way, which is great. I don't know where he's off to, but wherever it is, it does sound like good. Emily Chamson says, I'll sort it out and message you. Thank you very much. That would be good. We'll bring up my camera. Um, 
Uh, uh, Anthony Jones is talking far. Is it Fall? Have I got the pronunciation right there? Fall, P-H-A-L, Fall. Richard Sargett says, just to add to my wife's... Uh, what? Just to add, my wife's man grew up... My wife's man grew up in India. She cooked the best curries. Do you mean mum? I think you mean mum, not your wife's man. That's an interesting concept there, Mr Suggett. Uh, Glenn Johnson says, so you ruin a steak. Yes, I ruin a steak by cooking it. I like my cook. I like it char grilled on the inside and then work its way out. I don't I like it really very well cooked. If you can imagine it's come out of a volcano, it's almost done. Um, uh, Sarah E. Banks, Korma or Thai Green? Hmm? Sarah, I beg your pardon. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Thai green, yeah, I like Thai green curry. I think that's good. Maya says, what type of rice do you like? She prefers pillow, pillow rice. Uh, whereas um, Richard Saget is saying, uh, just to add to my wife's nan. Her nan grew up in India, though, so there we go. How about Thai chicken curry? Yes, I do like that. That's nice. Uh, Mark Selwood says he had a Red Ruth Morish's cod. Not sure what that is, but it sounds gross. I'm not into fish, you see. Blackpool is uh, something that Glenn Johnson's on about. Not quite sure why. Steve Pilfold, on the other hand, says you can come to the live broadcast of Bonfire Brunch in November with Eugene Mark Sully. Do tell me, what time of day is that? And is that during? Is that part of the Lewis thing or one of those things? That would be interesting. Lovely to get some footage of there. As long as I can park, and get in and get out. That's an imperative for my show. Um, Cushy Phil says, the Indian takeaway by the smugglers in East Worthing used to do a pilchard curry. A pilchard curry? Pilchard. Uh, he said it was really nice. Well, you know, there's there's always something for somebody. I guess you can put curry powder on anything at the end of the day. You could uh, curry turnips, I suppose. Uh, Maya says, Richard, I was the same as you. Steak, well done, but I'm slowly more moving towards medium. It's interesting that you say that because my children were bought up, brought up rather. They, were, they weren't bought. They were brought up with meat very well cooked because I didn't want any salmonella. I didn't want any germs in it. I couldn't bear blood seeping out of it, seeing anything red. Oh, my God. No, thanks. I want it cooked. As uh, Charles, Charles Stell once said, um, on the Vogue Show podcast many years ago. He's a long-term listener from Arkansas. He said he's seen many a cow get up from a small... A get up and, you know, from a small wound when it's been only a little bit cooked. You've got to cook it all the way through! Ian Beddo says uh, we could get John Burger. We could get to John Burgers for a meal. What day is good for you, Vobes? Yeah, what, yeah John Burger happens to be in Pennsylvania. Uh, or uh, in the state of Pennsylvania. And that's uh, a long way for me to go. But, of course, if uh, airplane, airplane tickets are thrown in, then, of course, I'll go. Mark Green has joined. Hello, Mark. Cheers to you, Mark Green. Uh, we're drinking some Biddy's Five Cider from the Biddingdon... Not Biddingdon, the Biddenden... Biddenden... Get it right? Biddenden Vineyard. They also do wine, hence the name Vineyard. OK. Let's move on to, whilst you're thinking about your curries and things, Mark Selwood says his, his meat's got to be well cooked. Well done, Mark. That's great. By the way, as well as T-shirts, ladies and gentlemen, we have now the flyers for uh, the Biddenden uh, Tractor Fest and also for just promoting the Bald Explorer um, videos and what have you. You know, of course, that um, the Bald Explorer is the other show that I do. I do a daily show. You've probably seen it. you probably watched some of the videos. These are walks. They're a bit more serious than the Vogue show, which occasionally is uh, mad and madcap. Sometimes it's just sort of, you know, a bit fairly straight. I'm in a fairly straight sort of mood tonight. I'm not doing Kenneth Williams impressions this evening. Oh, no, it's not mucking about. All right, I'm doing one. Uh, yeah, but we have the flyers and they've all been printed. If you've been following, if you've been following the Vobi One-Eyed Kenobi, you'll be following what's been going on. We've got those for the Biddington thing. Uh, 5,000 of those. And also the lovely Julia and I have been signing them because a couple of people had said, is there any chance we could have a signed photo? And we thought, well, of course, if you want a signed photo, you can have one. 
So if anybody would like a signed photo with signed by Julia and myself, they're in the other room, this one that we actually signed, uh, there's still a few. A few people have. All you have to do is send me a stamped addressed envelope. Otherwise, I'll be out of pocket, you understand. A stamped addressed envelope. Um, and if you don't know my address, then what you need to do is email me, richard at vobes.com. Email me. Don't message me on Facebook. I can't cope with the messages on Facebook because I often don't see them. Facebook is an annoying thing because... I've got the Vogue Show page, there's the Bald Explorer group, and then there's the Bald Explorer page, and then there's my own personal Facebook page, you know. That's four different things, and people can send messages to me on all four of those. And can you imagine having to sort of look for messages and going, oh, blimey, have I checked this one? Have I checked with... I want all messages just to go to my email box. One place to check, one place where all the emails are gathered, would make life easier. So if you want to get in touch, please email me, richard at vobes.com. It's my name plus the dot com, richard at vobes.com. Sorry to be a pain about it, but it's just so much easier because every now and again I'll go in and go, oh, there's a message from last week that I missed. I missed. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, if you'd like a signed photograph, then uh, send an email, say, can I have your address, Richard? I'll send you the address. Send me the post, uh, send me the stamped address envelope and you'll get one of those which will be great. Uh, actually, you may get a couple of these, you know, because um, you might want some to put in the uh, the window of your house or in your local church or, uh, you know, down at the undertakers. Perhaps, um, you know, there are a lot of uh, deadbeat people who want to watch the show. You never know. You never know where they're going to watch the show and you may want to hand those flyers out. Richard Sogat says, hang on, I need a signed flyer. Just realised I haven't asked for one. There you go, Richard, when next time you're passing. Joe Smith says, superstars, yay! Thank you to Joe Smith. She, I have to say, Joe Smith's been a great supporter of the show. Not only did she make a nice donation, which was fantastic the other day, but also she said, when you come to Tractor Fest, I'm going to put up a massive banner, a massive banner. It's going to be about a mile long. We're going to have aeroplanes saying the bald explorer is here. We're going to have a couple of hot air balloons made out of the logo. If you can imagine the logo, she said a hot air balloon. We're going to have those with the rides. You go riding around and you can throw down your signed photographs and everyone will be grabbing. Actually, she didn't say any of that, but she did say she's going to make us a banner, which is very kind. So thank you so much, Joe. Glenn Johnson says my band uses... All Facebook pages, plus Messenger, plus WhatsApp, plus text, plus email. So wonder why we miss stuff. Exactly. This is it. I think people, if you're trying to contact somebody, you know, personalities or people who do events and things like this, like what I'm doing, like what I'm doing, I mean, Ari, um, having one place where people contact you, it's so important because you just cannot, you know, you cannot find all those messages and people do do it. Emily Champion's got it right, Richard at Vobes.com. Thank you very much. I need to make up a, a thing for that. Mark Selwood says, if I can get a couple from Richard, Nikki, I will send you one. So there we go. Um, might get Miss Champion to sign mine too. Oh, well, there we are. You can get the uh, the lovely Emily Champs to uh, to sign on it as well, if you so wish, if she's up for it. You know, everybody who is at... You might want Richard Suggett also to sign on them which would be good. The lovely Julia says, I felt so silly signing those flyers. No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't feel silly. Uh, by the way, the lovely Julia is hurtling up to Birmingham as we speak. She's um, in the... So she's hopefully you haven't taken your hands off the wheel as you type that, lovely Julia. But no, not at all. You're a superstar. Look, you're on there. You are on both sides. I know you don't like that picture very much, but it works very well. Um, but you're on there. You're a superstar. And one day... One day we'll make some money out of this nonsense and then, you know, you'll probably get... The thing is, Julia, I think down the line somebody, a big corporation, some, you know, television mogul will see you and go, you're going places and this ball bloke, you've had your chance, you've muffed it and I'll be suckered onto the side. But never mind, that's the way it goes. Nigel Santa says, very brief hello from the Loire Valley. The 3G signal is crap where I am. Well, drink yourself, silly. Cheers to you, uh, young man. Drinking I am um, on tonight's show from the Biddingdon Vineyard, some Biddies 5. Very nice. It's a beautiful sparkling, um, bottle sparkling uh, cider, uh, and it's delicious, I have to say. 
coming up next week, uh, we'll, you'll see uh, an interview with the, the lovely lady whose name now escapes me. Um, was she an Emily? I think she was an Emily, wasn't she? She was an Emily. I think so. Uh, who took me round the uh, vineyard at Biddenden. Uh, Biddenden. Not Bidding. Bidden, Biddenden. I'm slowly getting... I've only got a few days left. I've got um, 15 days before the Tractor Fest to get it right. Otherwise, I shall be whacked on the head. Uh, Julia Hartley says that the, uh, the fairy tree has been reinstalled with fairy doors and accoutrements to use biodegradable materials. So that's very good. That's good news. Thanks for telling us uh, about that. Um, so there we go. Right, OK. So let's talk about the Tractor Fest and let's find out how the live box is going. You may remember on Wednesday we took the old live box out down for a test run. We were wheeling it about. It was a bit amateurish. It was a bit naff. But we, we got a, a few things ensconced in our brains about how we are going to do the uh, the Tractor Fest um, and other events thereafter, of course. It's not just the Tractor Fest, but this is going to be our landmark test uh, to do this. We're going to get it right because everyone's depending upon us. And they'll be tuning in in their droves. Yes, they'll be dro dro droodling, droodling in to tune of the droves. This is good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I like this. Right. OK, so so let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look at some pictures, ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, you may remember. Do you recall? Do you remember? This is what the box looked like when we put it together there. It's only got two wheels, but I, I put on some extra wheels, um, put on the handles and, and what have you. And this is this is how the box was looking the last time. We kind of looked at it, although just imagine there are two wheels now on the front, more wheels. There we are, look, and here's the wheels. But actually now they've been, they've got spacers and they're fastened and and that's all it. But, ladies and gentlemen, never mind all of that, because here the madman, there he is, the madman, a dab and at painting in his painting clothes. Good job you can't see my painting shorts there, because uh, they're not uh, the choicest things. Um, that's my old shirt that I'm wearing there. The madman there is painting in uh, harvest gold. This is uh, some paint that we went to Dulux to give them a little bit of a mention where they mix up. I want I said I want some harvest gold colour, the old agricultural colour of Sussex. I know it's a Kent show, Kentish show, but um, that's what I want. They said, yes, no problem. And they mixed up to the colour specification that I asked for, which was grand. And the first coat has gone on. Now, I know it looks all a bit rough. There we are. You can see that the handle's been taken off. Um, those. Are, this is the behind, really. You, you, the, the punter doesn't see this end because this is where we'll be standing. We're going to put some some sort of... Mr Suggett says he's got some nice little rubber seal things which will go round those access holes to the shelves so they will look a bit better. Um, we're not going to paint the inside. Might varnish it or put some rubber mats in there or something like that. Um so that's really the painting. That's the harvest gold going on. There's the four wheels, just so that you uh, you know uh, and can remember what wheels look like because they're really good. They really are. Um, so, yeah, so with that, that now the handles are going to be in British Racing Green um, to match the stickers which will go on the side. Stickers, well, it's actually their vinyls. They're printed on um, PVC. And they'll be in British Racing Green and they'll go on the side and it's all going to look very exciting. So I'm very thrilled about that. Uh, they're at, currently at the printers, so we're waiting for that. So it'll be good. Uh, Glenn Johnson says the sky is harvest gold now. There we go. Well, that's the kind of colour it is. Great colour. Make it stand out. You should bring the box to the Dorset Steam Fair, says. Well, we may well. We may well, Terry Wood. We may well do that. Um... So that's Steve Pilford said made stars. What made stars out of Sophie and friends? I'm not quite sure what Sophie and friends are. I'm just looking, Steve. Ford. Um, I've given the Wi-Fi a good talking to. Oh, OK, fair enough. By nine years. I'm not quite sure what he's on about. Just trying to come to terms with that. What's, who's Sophie and friends and, and what is that connection? Anyway, um, Ali has arrived. Hello, Ali Nicole. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much. He's been a supporter of the Naked Englishman for a long, long time. The sunset here is 2109. 2109. Oh, here tonight, 25 minutes later than Worthing. Ideal for live shows. Oh, well, there we are. We're to come over to your place and do a live show. We've only got 20 minutes of this show left. 
unfortunately. So anyway, Bessie is on the way to being painted. I've got to yet do the the uh, the handles. It's all going to be good. And you know, as we get closer to it, I'm going to keep you updated and all that sort of stuff. Now, we've spoken about the leaflets. We've spoken about the uh, the Bessie thing. We've spoken about the t-shirts. If you want to order the t-shirts, go to baldexplorer.com. That's the best place to order those. There will be others coming in due course. Might get some in um, Harvest Gold. That would be nice, wouldn't it? We might do that. Steve Polfold is saying, the show you did with the live box, Sophie. Oh, yes, Sophie and the Audi girls. I beg your pardon. Now I'm with you. That's right. Thank you very much, Steve. We did make them famous, uh, internationally famous. Now, of course, they'll be appearing on uh, Broadway, I think, at the end of the week with their new show, which is Sophie and the uh, Audi girls, which is great. Uh, when you were out on the test the other night, you met some girls. Oh, yes, that's right. You know, met the girls. You know what it's like. Uh, couldn't keep them away. Mark Silver says, please don't worry about the Sophie and the friends. Richard, sometimes on the wacky stuff. What are you talking about? Ian Beddo says, totally off subject. The MOD have £10,000 bomb for sale on a website. A £10,000 bomb for sale. Is that What do you mean £10,000? Oh, as in weight. A £10,000 as in weight. Oh, for sale. For the a starting price of four hundred pounds, uh, four hundred quid. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. People will be not buying T-shirts now. They'll be racing off to buy this MOD Ministry of Defence bomb. Is that a bomb from the Second World War, or is that a new bomb, or or something? Is that you know they're selling it to terrorists now so that they can go and bomb places, other places, other parts of the world? Is that the idea? Interesting concept. Right. Anyway, never mind all that. We've talked about um, the uh, the box. We've talked about the leaflets, which is here, and you can get your stamped address envelope by uh, emailing me, etc., etc., etc. Let us talk about now how you can help out the show or you can help promote the show because we do need to get a little bit of help and a little bit of promotion. So now, as before, where is that caption gone? Here we go. If you go to thebaldexplorer.com, You'll see that we do all sorts of interesting things there. We've uh, we've got the group, which is great. A lot of people go and post pictures in the group and do all that, which is lovely. And um, I do a daily video, um, Monday to Friday, as you know, a walking video, of history, landscape, nature, that sort of thing. But um, if I'm just doing a little bit of promotion for the patrons now, a bit of trying to get more patrons, people to support the show and help us do what we are doing because we are working very hard to get this. Mr Suggett was over here this afternoon um, and we were working out testing cameras to take to Tractor Fest and, and actually the camera I'm filming on now, ladies and gentlemen, is a camera that's not the normal camera that I use, although you probably don't notice, notice any difference. Maybe you have, maybe you didn't. But this is the camera we're testing out because we're going to take this to... Um, uh, tractor fest to be able to pick it up zoom in move it around go in and 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 have that sort of real live feel as well as cameras based on the live box um so we, i nearly had to go and buy that but i have invested a lot of stuff in the uh, in the gear for the tractor fest and for other venues because i think that getting out and about and doing these live shows is going to be a really interesting thing uh, we're going to try and make them a bit slicker but not too slick we don't want it like the BBC or Channel 4 or anything like that. We don't want it too slick because you may as well just watch the television. We want this to be um, not amateur, but nicely produced, but with your feedback and your comments and your involvement and all of that. But in order to do that, ladies and gentlemen, we do need a little bit of your help. And this is where you can help by becoming a patron if you're not a patron already. Now, what is the advantage of becoming a patron, you might ask? Why do I donate a little bit of money to the cause and it may be just the price of a cup of coffee you know two or three quid a month uh, or it may be the price of uh, perhaps a Sunday paper you know by the time you bought the Sunday papers it's about five quid and actually what you get for that I'll tell you not only do you get these uh, free shows and you just be helping and supporting us in that way but you'll also get if you become a patron the Naked Englishman podcast this is a daily audio journal that i produce i record in the studio here mostly sometimes out and about 
It's about 10 minutes. It, sometimes it's longer. Sometimes it extends to 30 minutes. It's a, it's a sort of podcast stream of consciousness, if you like. I'm talking about the behind the scenes, the, my life, the challenges we have, um, the problems that one gets. Uh, it's a very personal insight to running a, a channel like this, the problems that you have, the challenges that you overcome, um, the exciting things and, and all of that. It's a daily sort of audio blog, if you like. It's, uh, and people seem to find it very interesting. And I'm sort of the everyman, if you like. I'm the everyman who faces all, they could be all sorts of problems. In the past, I faced my dad's dementia and uh, told the story and we've heard poor old dad going through that unfortunately he died last year then dealing with the estate and the the um the what you call it the um probate dealing with that and you learn all of that you know and how it works and i share all of this on the naked englishman when my son nearly died he had a brain hemorrhage uh, when he was 18 a few years ago now about five years ago and he nearly died and you heard how that hit not just myself, but the family personally. It was it was quite awful. And before that, you heard the whole sordid story of losing an eye and the the problem. So you know, there it's it's an interesting thing because life throws at you some very strange curveballs. So you get this, and obviously you don't you don't get all the like ten years of backstory. You just get the ongoing story because I think that's quite enough, really. Um, but in that, it's a bit like the Archers. It's the everyday tale of a YouTuber and Facebook uh, video producer. So it's an, it's an interesting thing. Nobody else gets it other than the patrons. So that that's yours, you get that. But also, also, you get, and nobody else gets this but the patrons, a behind-the-scenes excerpts from my week and the people who are involved in what we do. So I thought I'd just play in a little excerpt here of the sort of thing that you would get. You'd get this once a week, a video, uh, behind the scenes. Have a look at this. This is a, a while ago, as you can see. It's Sunday the 15th. Mr. Suggett, if you could come this way. Here he is, the one Sorry, and only. Turn the glasses off. Mr. Sh what did I call you? Snugget. Snugget. Mr. Mr. Snugget. Um, <laughs> we're down at Mr. Snugget's allotment. We've been doing some filming. It's it's Sunday morning. Came down at seven o'clock in the morning. He said, he said, Richard, can you get down here at seven? I said, oh my goodness. And the first thing he did, he brewed some coffee. So actually that wasn't too bad. We've been doing some filming and we're going to be doing some weeding. You know, it's not just larking about with cameras. We are actually going to do some work. And uh, I owe Richard some help because he's been helping with the old podcast. You don't owe me anything. I'm just thinking more for you've got into gardening. It'll give you a... That's period. true. That's, you owe me a coffee anyway. Owe you a coffee. <laughs> you've got into gardening and I want to demonstrate to you what... Come back the... here a bit because yeah. you're not quite... There we go. Oh, there we go. We want, to, we want to see all of the lovely Mr. Suggett. Mr. Snugget. Snugget, as we now call him. Uh, um, but yeah, so... Well, I'm I'm thoroughly excited about this whole prospect. You know, doing Julia's garden has been great, but obviously it's not my garden. Yeah. I've got a tiny garden, but if you can help me turn that into um, its own little terraced house veg patch, we've got it? potential. Yeah. We've got potential. So, have you got a busy week ahead? I don't know yet. Probably no, no work. No. Yeah. Well, um... hopefully this is going to be another busy week of uh, behind the scenes today. We've got something very special. That I... sound, Julia. It wasn't me. Are you sure? <laughs> At the moment. Oh dear. Um, we are surrounded by bulls. Now this well, is cows. Oh cows! I kept saying they were cows, and I kept being told they were bulls. No, that's one bull. One bull. And the rest are cows. Oh, they're w one bull. One bull. On Wimbledon, <laughs> and the rest are cows. Here we go. Look. Oh, they're sheep. Oh, they're sheep. You can hear sheep over there. <laughs> no, no, they're definitely, they're definitely <coughs> bulls and cows. Julia's having a suckle. Oh, this is T.O.J. having a suckle. So, yes, Adrian the farmer <laughs> has named one of the calves the lovely Julia. And... The lovely Julia is just over here. Let's see if I can get a shot. Get a shot. Anyway, 
I, I won't play the whole thing in, but that's just a snippet of the thing. I've, I realised, of course, I'd played in a bit of the uh, the cow thing in a previous Vogue show. But basically a snippet. It's a snippet of every day. Um, so you get a week, seven, seven, at least seven clips, but you often get a bit more. Um, and it's an insight to the things that we're doing on video, uh, all all put together. Well, thanks very much. There we are. Look, that's the phone binging away in the background. Um, so, yeah, so... If you fancy becoming a patron of Vobes, it just helps. It's, you know, whatever you whatever you want. But um, I'll leave that up to you. We do, what we don't do, what we don't do is enforce a subscription. People say to me, oh, Richard, you know, you should have a subscription. You should make it £10 a month or you should do this and do that. But actually, this is a community, this whole business. And it's really, you know, if you don't want to pay anything or you can't pay anything or whatever, then that's fine. That's fine. You get you get all the free stuff anyway. Um, and but if you you know, if you've got not very much, it's just the fact that you're keen and you're able to help out. Some people can't afford to pay anything, but they help in different ways, like they take me on walks and things. So sometimes I'll say to them, it's like, do you know what? You've helped me out ever so much. It's very kind. You've organised all of this. I'll give you the you know, you can get the naked Englishman. You can get the weekly thing. Not everybody wants it, of course, mind you. A lot of people say, do you know what? That's the biggest pile of rubbish I've ever seen. I don't want it, which is fair enough. And when we go on our mini adventures, which we, we have now, it's the summer holidays. Difficult to do that because everywhere is very pricey. But when we do go on our, and we've only just started them this year, we go on our mini adventures. We record some extra stuff that only the patrons get. We get some extra podcasts in and some extra videos and that sort of thing. And, and only the patrons get those. So there is a benefit to doing it, hopefully. And as we grow and as we get better and as I'm able to then, you know, be able to help out with um, the lovely Julia. And, you know, because she does a hell of a lot for me, I have to say, and be able to give her a bit more cash uh, so that she's earning some money. And Mr. Suggett and other people who are all willing to help and give up their time. You know, I'd, I don't like to take everything it's all about serving you lot so that's really what that's all about um so there we go now let's go and have a look in the group shall we have a look in the group and see what uh what the group is up to uh which would be good hang on i just got to set the group up so that we can actually see the pictures we have got the group here and somewhere somewhere some enchanted evening we have the 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 theme music so let's have a look on the group then today and see what's been posted in the Board Explorer group, the pictures that people have put up. And we're going to start with this delightful scene, uh, which is uh, Elaine Brazier, Open Garden Summer in 2017. Um, this was in Dover, the Italian Garden. And she's got a load of pictures about that, which looks great, fantastic. Thanks very much for posting those. Always good to see them. Meanwhile, on a nice, dramatic blue sky, ladies and gentlemen, Graham Whittington went down to Selsey last Saturday evening in the vain hope of catching some moon shots. Well, the clouds rolled in, um, and in about an hour, and the moon began to rise. But in the meantime, he got these incredible blue skies. Isn't that amazing? That's very good. He's a very good photographer. Thank you very much, Graham. It's always good to see your pictures. Judith Oakley, on the other hand, has been to the Herb Garden at uh, Southwark Cathedral. Um, so now South Walk or Southwark Cathedral. Not quite sure where that is. Is that in London, Southwark? Are we talking about the London Southwark? Anyway, there it is. There's lots and lots of herbs in there. The old herbs. Know what I mean? Mark English has um, gone to the Gibson Mausoleum in the churchyard of St Nicholas Church in Sutton in Surrey. It was built in 1777 as a family tomb for the uh, London wine merchant whose name was James Gibson. And he lived from 1706 to 1776 and then they built this rather nice... It'd be lovely to have a, a big family tomb, wouldn't it, like that? I think that would be rather, that'd be, you know, absolutely delightful. Paul Hine has been posting Hartley Mordit Church in Hampshire. Delightful setting. Look at that. What a beautiful setting. Those lovely little ponds around. Beautiful place. I must, uh, there's a lot of lovely places in Hampshire to go and visit. Paul does manage to seek them out and get them, which is fantastic. Sarah Paul 
um, has been posting the metal contraption, she says, is a sparrow roaster and it's in Horsham Museum. It was uh, reposted, I think, in response to uh, Paul Hines' sparrow picture about a recipe for the bird, which does sound rather grim. Uh, you know, but they used to do, they used to eat all sorts of things back in ye day. But there we are, sparrow roaster. My goodness, that is uh, that's a grim thing. More skies here, ladies and gentlemen, and this is uh, Charlie Taylor. Photos, she says, I took of the weird clouds last Friday. Very strange, and yet so beautiful. And they are beautiful. It's interesting. The sky is something that uh, is often overlooked. I think looking up sometimes and looking at the amazing sky is uh, something that we should all do. Meanwhile, Terry Woods has not been looking at the sky. He's gone to Kent's Cavern in Torquay, and he's had a very interested guided tour looking at these stalagmites and the other ones. F what are the phallic? Not phallic. They look phallic. Phallagmites. I don't know what they are. Phallagmites will do for now. Uh, so thank you very much to that. Here's a little bit of art. Tom Crawford's been uh, noticing the art on the base of a flyover near the River Ouse in Bedford. God save the Queen, it says. 2005 art. That's very nice. You know, as graffiti goes, I think that looks very nice. And he, of course, takes a delightful photograph. So thank you so much for that. And finally, Vicky uh, Longdon. Vicky Longdon went exploring with Bramber. Uh, with her trusty sidekick, Lola. Oh, sorry, not with Bramber, to Bramber, that's it. Went exploring in Bramber with her trusty sidekick, Lola. And that's not the Lola that I know, but it's a different Lola, and what a friendly-looking Lola it is. So there we are. Thank you very much for all of those. Delightful pictures and deliciously presented. So you can now do the dance to the music, because we've still got a little bit of it. And I'm sorry I can't return all your photographs, uh, so put them into a paperback uh, nose print and um, sling them over the hedge and then see if the post, the dustman will pick them up. Uh, that's probably not very sensible. Anyway, um, Matthew Holdsworth says Southwark Cathedral is on the South Bank, pretty close to London Bridge. So it is the one in Southwark. Thank you very much, Matthew. That's very good. Mark Selwood says, I've been working so hard lately, I've got to catch up on the videos. Well, we're looking forward to the next video that you make, Mark Selwood, because we know that you excel at video making, which is great. Elizabeth Houston is there. She says, Hartley Mordit is exceedingly horribly haunted. Is it? Maybe that's something for Mark English. Perhaps... Mark, you have been there and done one of your spiral paranormal investigations. By the way, the lovely Mark English has a trailer. Go to the Ball Explorer um, page, uh, the group, and check out his very interesting uh, trailer. It looks very well done, uh, very interesting. He goes to a fort, uh, I forget where it is, somewhere in London, um, a, a haunted fort. And it looks brilliant. So do check that out. You have to click on the picture to go to, or not on the picture, on the link to get to the the YouTube channel to see it. But um, that's very easy. He appreciates you to go there and click up some views. So do check that out. Most It's like most haunted, but a lot better. Um, Pam Earnshaw says, it was after the show, James, it featured on the behind the scenes video that the patrons get. Oh, she's talking to James. There we go. Mark Selwood says, fantastic cloud formation. That was, wasn't that? Wasn't that great? Dan Thompson says, uh, Richard Vobe's show, My Horses, I posted in here. Right? Well, I didn't understand that. Matthew Holdsworth, Dan, you need to post them on the group. Oh, yes, that's true. Post them on the group. Yeah, don't post them in the Vobe show. Post them in the Bald Explorer group. I know it's confusing because we're running two different things. It, uh, I don't know how to do it. Mark Selwood says, lovely photos and group. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Lots of them. Lots. People are posting all sorts of stuff. It is well worth and it's a very friendly group. And by the way, can I say that we now have 937 members of the group? 937. It would be great to get to 1,000 by the end of the month. So if you know anybody who likes posting pictures, who likes nature, who likes history, who likes landscapes, that sort of thing, then shove them over to the Ball Explorer group, get them to join, and that would be fantastic. And also on YouTube, let me also announce that we have 2,174 
uh, subscribers on YouTube. Thank you very much to the YouTube people. I know you don't get much of a mention on this show, and that's because it's live on Facebook at the moment. I do want to go live on both down the line. We've been doing this for a while, and I promised and promised, and these things do take a bit of time to sort of get together, and it will happen. Um, we just need a few more patrons to pay for the, the monthly subscription that it would cost in order to broadcast live on both simultaneously. It's about £15 a month to do that, unfortunately. So, um, and there's a lot of expenses that are going out at the moment. But yeah, no, but anyway, so we've got 2,174 at the last count, which was before the show. If you do watch on YouTube and you haven't subscribed, do subscribe. You'll get uh, and, and press the bell notification because you'll get the notified when each show starts. So that would be great. Thanks very much for that. Steve Polford says, uh, if you are looking for something to do in the summer holidays, Sussex, there is his guide in the group. And if you can't find something like a video, Check on the videos tab and you'll see all the videos that people have put up. So it's a quick way to get to it. I have to say Facebook isn't the best and easiest thing to navigate when things have gone up on the timeline. It's, it is very ir irritating. There's no search bar. At least I don't think there is. Um, but if it's a video or a photo, you can. I think there's a tab that you can go hunting in, which would be good. James DeWill says, sorry, I'm late. Needed to consume a bottle of oars I'd opened. Fair enough. Martin Snow has finally arrived. Hello, Martin Snow. You are here, Martin. We did mention you earlier in the show saying, will you hurry up, please, and organise somewhere for the Vobi One-Eyed Kenobi to go walking with you? Keep asking you. And uh, nothing happens. But we want to get the orange shirt back on the screen. We We have missed you. People are talking to their MPs. They're going to say the Vogue show will be banned if we can't get another walk uh, with Martin Snow. He is the leading authority on all things Sussex. So um, try and find something, Martin, which would be great. Um, Steve Pulford says you can do it free with an Amazon AWS server and free software. There's quite a guide online, but it's a bit fiddly. I don't like fiddly. It's fiddly enough dealing with Facebook as it is. And if anybody saw me getting stressed the other day when we were out trying to do a live broadcast, I don't like fiddly. I want it nice and simple. Uh, James would have said, mistype, should have said red wine, freezing a lot. Don't worry, we've come to the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. So hopefully you won't freeze. But thank you so much, uh, everybody, for joining. It's been absolutely lovely. But now, unfortunately, it's that time to say thank you for joining me. <laughs> that sounded like David Alam. Al Al What's his name? Hello there. Thank you for joining me. Uh, but in the meantime, take care one and all. Um, and don't forget to become a patron. Don't forget to ask for your flyer. T-shirts available on the uh, Bald Explorer website. And um, any other thing. have to say the cider was great. So uh, check that out if you're in Biddenden. And I'll be back on... Monday with the Monday show. I think I will be back on Monday. I've got a busy week next week, but I think I'm back on Monday. We'll keep you posted on the Vogue show. Till then, when you hear this music, ladies and gentlemen, it means I've got to go and have a little lie down. It's been a long week. And Mr. Suggett says I'm burning the candle at both ends. So I'm trying not to burn that candle. We need the wax. Take care, one and all. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been absolutely wonderful. You've been a joy to perform to, to entertain. And thank you for your patronage uh, and all of those things. And I will see you on Monday. Take care. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.